being part of the educational committee, we always find uh, you know room to explore. One of the things that happens quite often is uh, we'll come up with a subject, and someone will say, "Hey, we've already done that." And what happens is, you know, it kind of cheats the industry a little bit because if you didn't see the first one and review developments, you know, sometimes we kind of need to revisit. I had an interesting thing happen in my store. We had an aftermarket vendor that happened to mention that you know they, in the past, did fit testing for respirators, where the representative would sign off after the fit test. And a lot of people, a lot of representatives, I should say, were afraid now to sign off because if a technician developed issues down the road, the person that signed off could be potentially liable. So it was something that you know I brought to the educational committee, and we thought that it might be an area that we might want to re-explore to see if there's any new things in the industry, and just to revisit some good safety habits uh, for shop owners and employees. And so we have Toby Chess today doing awesome. a presentation for us. Toby, we're going to talk about respirators, but more concerning about OSHA and the impact in the body shop. Um, the fines today are staggering. When they come into your shop, in the past, it was due to a complaint through an employee or it had an industrial accident. Uh, back in 2012, OSHA got a mandate for uh, isocyanates that, uh, and lifts. So it allowed them to come into your shop to do an inspection of isocyanates, how you protect your employees up for isocyanates protection, and if your lifts are currently up to uh, inspections. If not, the, they started doing all kinds of nice little things and just write your checkbook out. Uh, back in 2016, uh, they were given huge amounts of more money uh, to, for fines. So a $500 fine jumped up $1,500. $1,500 jumped up to $2,500, all the way up to 10000 bucks just minor infractions. So here we have the nuclear industry, we have tree, tree trimming, uh, high wires, glass, collision repair. Of the five there, what did you think is the most dangerous for chemicals and exposure? Nuclear, nuclear right, wrong. What is? What do you think it is? No, not, it's actually, Body shops. There are more chemicals and more things in your facility that you're not aware of that are on the uh, warnings list. And we have tended as shop owners and managers not to look at these things. Next. All of the chemicals and things in your facilities will affect every one of those areas. Not just one, every one of them. You know, a lot of guys go in there and you see them using these door skin hammers. The decibel readings on those are 130 to 135 decibels. A jet engine taken off is, not a military jet, but a commercial jet is 120. Yet these guys don't have hearing protection. And then they start losing hearing. So all of those things will be affected by the chemicals and the items in your body shop. Next. The biggest problem is the lungs and the blood. Next. Isocyanates. Where do we find them? They're a colorless material. You can't smell them. You can't see them. It's a vapor. Where do we find them? Where? Everybody says paint. Oh, yeah. Clear coat. Maybe primer. And that's it. Wrong. There's isocyanates in Bondo. Isocyanates in some of your seam sealers. Isocyanates are in virtually any product that's a two-part product that takes a dryer. The only thing that you get away from it is epoxies. Pardon me? <coughs> So your body techs are exposed to isocyanates. If they're working on a car and they heat it up and 
uh, to do some work on that panel, they're going to release isocyanates that are in that paint, but they're not wearing proper protection. Next. So I'm not going to go through and read all of this. You can find this on the website. We'll have it up there. But become aware of it as a shop owner or manager, the potential of ingesting these materials. Go ahead. Direct contact it can be absorbed through your skin, it can be absorbed through your eyes, it can be absorbed through your nose, it can be absorbed through any location. So working around isocyanates, you want to have gloves, you want to have long sleeves, respirators, and goggles. Where would you find what I need if I have a particular product? Like I did this morning, I did a bumper repair class. And I was using some of the other brand material. Before I even opened it up, I checked the uh, SDS sheet. I wanted to see if it had isocyanates in it, which it did, but I didn't ha I'd stopped using it. Where would you find it? An SDS sheet. What, what number? Number eight. Look in that. All your people should be familiar with number eight on a six, of the 16 things on the SDS sheets. That will tell you the PPE, personal protection equipment. And who's responsible for it? Barry? Yes. You as a shop owner, shop manager, are required to, f by law to furnish PPE. Now, we have what we call general duty clause. And that is that I furnish you with the materials for PPE. You have to know how to use it and use it. In California, they are talking about having uh, OSHA, Cal OSHA says if we find the owner didn't do something right and the technician was given all that stuff, he's going to get fined. Pardon me? Both. They're talking about it. And, you know, they should be responsible. I mean, if you walk in there and your technician isn't doing, following the proper rules, and then you get fined for it because why shouldn't he be responsible? Just my feelings. Next. Respirators. Respirator bag. $500 fine if, it's, if an OSHA inspector walks in and it's not in the bag when it's not in use. Or, no, it doesn't have to be, it can be stored in a coffee can, uh, a Ziploc bag, anything, as long as it's not sitting out. So we have uh, the run over on the far over here. Particulate. Those are for anything that is like a solid. Inside you'll find meshes and there are little holes in them and as the, they're breathing in the holes get smaller and smaller and they trap the material. Shop owners, I, I, you don't have to show me your hands, but do you regularly change out their respirators after so much usage? Do you have a book that specifies, hey, I change these out on a regular basis after so many hours of use. Think about it. Are they supposed to be pink, but they're black? Vapor. Your painters will use a vapor. They have a charcoal in them. Again, after so many hours of use, the charcoal becomes totally saturated, and they're no, they're no longer usable. What's crystalline silica? Anybody know what it is? Crystalline silica. Anybody? It's sand. Where do you find it? Well, beside the beach. In your body shop. Nope. You ain't going to believe this. Rubbing compound. Remember I told you OSHA has a mandate for crystalline silica. How many guys in your shop cut cars with no respirator protection? So I work for Kent, and I go out, and I do safety. I do respirator fit tests. 
uh, I go do a pre-OSHA walkthrough, look for things. Biggest problem I have is transferring from one material to another material and no labels. California is a $500 fine for each one. And there has to be the proper labels today with all of the correct verbiage. Guys, I see them out there all day cutting cars with no respirators. The one on the the one on here on the farthest right is a dual. It does uh, vapors and it does particulates. I think these are ideal for te body technicians. But most of the time you'll see them just using particulates, especially when they're welding. But having those duals, because remember, isocyanates of vapor, weld through primer is a particulate. So you can start changing them out. Well, it's nice to have one particular one that works for both of them. Next. OSHA regulations, again, um, everybody in your shop has to have a respirator fit test. And Barry has been very obliging to come up to be my guinea pig. Let me just give you a quickie on what we do with the respirator fit test. Yes, sir. All the way. Come on. Has this been used? No, it's brand new. I just took it out of the back. Let's pull them tight. So the first thing what I do is I come into this facility. They have to have a respirator medical exam. They do these online. They're in about a $30 range, but I have to have that before I do the test, which he's already done it. The first thing we're going to do is what a seal test. What I want you to do is uh, suck in. It's not tight enough because it's not pulling it. Pull it tighter. Look that way. <laughs> then we do go, try it again. Now, it's, you can see it here. Now, blow out. And if you can see that he's done a fairly decent job of sealing it. This I didn't tell him what I was doing. This is aired in smoke. All right, just breathe in normal. Breathe in and out. Turn your head to the yeah. side. Did you get it? Mm -hmm. Pull it tighter. And turn your head to the other side. So I would normally, we, there's a whole procedure that we go through with this. And the guy said, I didn't smell anything. Uh, can I hit you? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> oh, you want to? Okay. <laughs> it does work, guys. Trust me. And, and you find out. And one of the other things is. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. So. Respirators is the fourth highest OSHA fine. Fourth highest. They walk in and their thing ain't in a bag. Fine. If you don't have a respirator fit test, they'll shut you down. If it's not current, you don't have it all there, they'll shut you down until it is current. And the fine is. Seven, it used to be $7,500, it's over 10000 just for that. Next. Um, so here's some of the standards again. This will be on the website, right? Yeah. Yeah. Next. So we did the respirator fit test. Next. Again, there's uh, uh, the other, there's, they can put a, a uh, uh, a hood around you, and they'll put an irritant in there, and 
you have to go through a series of tests. It's just depending on what system it is, and it's marked. Again, guys, you have the test. You have to have a book. Now, I, you know, I make sure all my people, when they do it, get a book. In that book, it tells you date, medical exam errors, and the date that you gave them a new uh, respirator and the filters. Then there's dates for changing them out. So if an OSHA inspector walks in, here's my book, up to date. It just saves a lot of time. Next. Yes. Oh, go ahead. Now, what if your techs have facial hair? Uh, I can't test them. Now, it's a, it's a problem, you know, is that a, a guy comes in, I'll, in a, uh, I will mark in there non, non-testable due to beard. And if he doesn't shave it off, and we have a problem. So most of them will shave it off and then grow it back. Guys, I can't wear a respirator when I weld because it doesn't do me any good. So, you know, word of wise. Next. Um, fit testing has to be done once a year. It's not whenever you feel like it. The, 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 uh, the, t- the online uh, medical exam, that uh, is good for less it's changed. So you ask us a question, anything has changed over the last year? No, then you're still good to go. Next. Look at where that respirator is in that picture. Besides, look at the, all of those canisters are an OSHA fine because all they did was put a piece of tape there. If you guys are in the shop and your painters are not putting a label on the coming out of your computer, you're going to get fined. Now, the only uh, exception to that is if, my, if I'm painting a car today and I have eight containers, OSHA walks in at 4 o'clock and I said, yeah, I've been in control of these all day. That's fine. I go home at 5 o'clock and I leave two of them out there. He's going to find me for those two. And anything that's left, left over that I didn't have a label on. So anything on an eight-hour shift is fine. Pass that. Make sure that they have print out those labels. Uh, so again, we talked about the crystal and silica. Uh, it's coming, guys. So if you're detailers or cutting cars with rubbing compound, they have to have a respirator fit test. Next. Um, yeah, well, guess what? Look at it. June, it's coming. Mandatory. Next. There's your, where you find that. Next. What, again, what's necessary? Go ahead. I can't go through. So here's your safety data sheet that I was telling you about. You'll find that number eight. Again, we'll tell you what. PPE that is necessary to be used. Next. So this is from SADA. Again, during the spring, look at that. Um, I, I, again, I'm not going to go through each one of them, but you can see what's going on in your paint department. How many of your painters are just wearing a respirator, guys? How many walk in wearing a full suit? Goggles, gloves. How about when they clean their guns? Yeah, right. How about when they're mixing paint? You're releasing isocyanates when you mix clear coat, gentlemen and lady. They need to wear it on, always when around that material. How many of you walk into painters, like going to Arizona, and they're wearing short pants and a t-shirt? Yes, sir. I love that point. Warfield, yeah. Oh. But my point being, anytime you're working around these materials, and, and I'll thank you very much, when these guys are taking those filters out, those floor filters, just loaded with these chemicals. How many guys have cleaned out your uh, inside, uh, the, the pit? I was at a shop, uh, my friend's shop, and the painter never cleaned it out, and it's only less than two years old. We took out two 35-gallon cans of material here two weeks ago. And these guys, first thing the guy was going to go in there with his blue jean t-shirt. Now we put him in a suit, respirator, and gloves. 
So take a look at when you're spraying, all of these things are possible for your health of your technician. Go next. This here is a full fresh air supply. There's a couple companies out there. This is SADA. Uh, SAS has one. There's a few other ones. There's some other ones that have their own air supply. This uses the shop air supply. Again, if you're using this system and you need to be compliant, they have to have Class D air, number one. Number two, they have to have a CO2 monitor. Excuse me, CO monitor, carbon monoxide monitor. We forget those. And yet, you know, they could be outside the, the, outside the spray booth or they can be on his belt. But you have to have it. It's a fine if you don't. Yes? Is this an option for someone with facial hair? Uh, speak up. I... Is this uh, an option for someone with facial hair? Um, you'd have to run a test on it. I would assume yes. I don't have one. You have one. You, and he's got facial hair. Yeah, it'd have to be positive pressure. Yeah. But I mean, these are something that you might want to think about as an investment is, again, walking in and see the guy just wearing a respirator. The fastest way for chemicals to get into your bloodstream is through your eyes. Seriously, I mean, that's the fastest way. Yet these guys just wear respirators and they're being bombarded with this isocyanates right through their eyes. If they're gonna do this, they need to wear goggles. Not safety glasses, goggles that seal them off. That's why I like this, it's all enclosed. Take next. Uh, this is from 3M. This is a, a battery operated one. Uh, I have not used it, but that's, it's on the market. Next. Paint suits, again, proper paint suits. There was a thing, a study on isocyanates and paint suits here not a couple years yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, not all paint suits are the same, so make sure it's a good quality paint suit. Okay, next, and that's it. Any more questions, please? Yes? So you're an employee of mine, and you can't, I, in order for me to administrate a test to you, you have to shave your beard off, right? Correct. All right, then you pass the test. Then you grow your beard back. Am I responsible as an employer to make you shave? I, that's something we'd have to look up, because I don't know. I'd have to check. Um, that's a good question. Um, I don't know the answer. I, I don't know the answer. I've, yes? My understanding is it's a condition of employment. If you've got a, a rule in, a, in any workplace that if there's a physical requirement for you to maintain a safety-related hygiene issue, it, it's totally different than having to wash your hands or your gloves. You have to be clean shaven or prevent the toxins from getting to you. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it.